day. I exercise, I meditate, I read positive psychology books and other books for inspiration. And well, you think oh. these things are making you happy, mate? Yeah, very. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Um, well, um, maybe I can help you. Uh, tell me about your family. Oh, well. Yes, I always grew up in a happy household, you know, yeah. My mum and dad, they're married. Yeah. To each other? Yeah, yeah, happily, yeah. <laughs> That's very unusual. Yeah. So am I. Oh, well, they both have careers, they're quite fulfilling. Um, they, they don't, they don't uh, sweat the small things in life. They, they make time for my sister and me, they share their vulnerabilities with each other, and, the, you know, they like doing exciting things together, you know, like a few home tattoos and a bit of... But so uh, you like, home you grew up in the happy household? I guess I never really thought of it like that. Do you think you could have had this happiness thing since you were a kid? Well, no, no, no. I think it's only become a problem since I started doing the positive uh, positivity ratio. Did you get that from Barbara Friedrichson, the positivity psychologist? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, mate. Uh, is this recreational or has this become a habit? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, to start off with, it was just happy thoughts, you know, with a friend, and oh, they felt really good. Yeah. So I started doing a few more and a few more and I guess I didn't realise it was becoming a habit, you know. I thought I could give it up any time I wanted to. Positivity <laughs> ratio is a very powerful thing, Mr. Flourishing. Do you know how really, really powerful it is? Yeah. <laughs> but I always thought my negativity would be there to protect me from the positivity. Yeah, but see how you thought that, mate. Because negative thoughts are three times more powerful than positive thoughts. That's why the positivity ratio is so important. Yeah, I know. You I know. need three positive thoughts to outweigh one negative thought. Yeah, but I always thought my negativity would be there for me. You no, know? but when you get the three to one ratio, you're fucked, mate. Three positive <laughs> thoughts, you know, outweighs it. He's going to... You need to cut me, I know, I know. Oh, come on, spill the beans, Doc. Come on, man. Come on, G. Have I reached the tipping point? What's the four one one, man? <laughs> Meet. And I don't know if this 
so we couldn't even meet a case such as yours. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I think we're about done. That'll be uh, $200. $200? We're going to be paying our for a minute. Yeah, well, they were my lunch minutes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you gave them up only. <laughs> she don't think this is worth $200. Does it bother you that I'm worth more than you, Mr. Flourishing? <laughs> well, you should start thinking about comparing yourself to others, mate. <laughs> Upward social comparison is to short my way to lower self-esteem, increase aggravation and destroy all self-compassion. Right. Yes, I'm not a doctor. That is the spirit. <laughs> I compare myself to the likes of Martin Seligman and Barbara Friedrichson all the time. They have changed their, the face of positive psychology with their research. I feel miserable when I compare myself to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me here, I'm in mean, here with you. Anyway, so get out and book an appointment. I'll tell my secretary to piss you off by giving you the runaround. Okay. Don't forget to stop the runaround. Thanks so much, Doctor! I'm trying to see a hope that I can make my life! Woo! Oh, wait, 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 Oh, come here, mate. Okay, so every morning when you get up, you've got to have a mantra, something like, um, I've got too much to do, I've got too much to do, nobody likes me, nobody likes me, Rick actually hates me. I'm fat, I'm fat, shit. I'm fat, 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 i am fat 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 i Never, ever, ever have any enthusiasm whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to work on that one. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like I'll waste my time trying and I'll fail. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> second thing. <laughs> Never, ever, ever have any kindness whatsoever. No kindness? No, because if you're kind, you feel good for a bit, so just chuck it out. <laughs> chuck it out. Yeah, right. All right, mate. Just me? Normally when people, so I had another birthday is what I'm trying to say, another birthday early on in the year. When people find out that I'm a leap year baby, the normal response is, oh, must suck only having a baby every four year, every, a birthday every fourth year. And uh, to be honest, there are positives. Here's a few. Uh, I may not look it, but I'm only 12. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, I've been guaranteed the captaincy for the next four years for the High Bitters Coast under 13 rugby league team. <laughs> I've just got to be healthy and I'm guaranteed player of the year too. So, you know, because my birthday only comes around every four years, I'm fascinated by the number four. Do you people realise how many mathematical equations ends in four? <laughs> I'll give you a couple. An obvious one. The square root of 16. 4. <laughs> Not so obvious.
obvious. The square root of 36 is 6 minus 2 equals 4. <laughs> and I'll do everything, <laughs> everything that's in it. <laughs> so I did, and that was cool. Until 20 minutes into it, even the pizza guy was getting some of the action. <laughs> <laughs> that's another reason why I like my Thursday night people. They like the crappy stuff. <laughs> so I've been waiting for you people all week. <laughs> You know, <laughs> being here trying to do my bit to stigmatise mental health, you know, because, I mean, I look at you know, but I've experienced a bit of stigmatisation. <laughs> I can feel it now. <laughs> you know, the common thread of thinking is either this guy is still stuck in the 80s and still trying to grow a mullet badly, <laughs> or he could be a lead singer in a Bee Gees covers band. <laughs> None of that. It's a bit more simpler than that. When I'm not doing comedy on weekend, particularly on Sundays, I like to gel my hair back hard, slick and oily. Then I go out West Auckland impersonating Bishop Brian Tamaki. Wrap <laughs> it up, because I'm doing a quick whip around at the end of the show. <laughs> No, stigmatisation, I'm not a professional, but I think a lot of it is just misinformation. Yeah, here's one. They say that people with mental health struggle to be in, maintain full-time employment. Bullshit, it's comedians that struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to any comedian and they'll give you their own definition of full-time employment, but they're not the same. You know? <laughs> I got into comedy because I wasn't really thriving in a normal 9 to 5 work scenario. Yeah, anyone else here just stop going to work? <laughs> no? Don't actually quit. Just one day stop showing up. <laughs> or better yet, go out for lunch and not come back. <laughs> I once said to my former neighbour, I'm just popping down to the food bar, grab something to eat, you want me to grab something for you while I'm down there? Well, actually, he gave me twenty dollars. <laughs> Still one of my best lunch ever. <laughs> and besides, the thing with work, you know, it's about that uh, I was just being paid to be sad. You know, <laughs> to be sad. Turn up, clock in, sad. <laughs> Depressed, you want to go home, but you can't, so you just spend most of the day hiding in the toilet. <laughs> And, and to prove my point, the only time you're not, they'll excuse you for not turning up for work if you're doing something that's sadder than work. <laughs> you, know, you have to be sick, stuck in court in jury duty, you know, or you're burying a family member dead in the family, yeah? And just to prove my point, you go ahead and have a baby, they give you three months leave because they know your life is over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stigmatization can affect people. You know, like uh, personally, uh, I'm in a relationship with a woman. Don't be fooled by the skirt and the mat. <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks she's a white lady, 15 years younger than me. Fit, tiny, hot. You know, we love to do things together. You know, but because of stigmatization, there are some stuff we don't do so much together, we don't go jogging together as a couple, you know, because of the age difference and her superior level of fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Even at my maximum speed, I'm still training and struggling behind her by about eight, sometimes up to <coughs> 13 metres, so instead of looking like a loving couple out on an exercise run, that's why it just looks like a single white female being chained. <laughs> Pacific Islander, <laughs> meeting to solid build, laughing, running, and looking like Bishop Brian Tarrake. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's in our best, it's all in our best interest to accept mental 
we had mental illness, it's normal because we all suffer it. Yeah, you do. We all have problems. You do. They do. I do. I'm struggling with the fact that just out of the, the woman I'm with, out of nowhere, she's starting to push marriage on to me. You know, we've been together, we've got children, we're struggling with the mortgage. I thought I only had the wedding. I skipped the minefield. I thought I walked past it, but no. <laughs> and what's unsettling, she's pushing marriage on to me. Exactly the same way I've been trying to push a threesome on to her. <laughs> <laughs> it started off.